Lift your hand up. Good. A trillion tiny particles are flying through your hand every second, originating from the sun. Even if it's night, these neutrinos will travel through the earth and your hand like it isn't even there. If you wait a whole year and you're lucky, one of these countless particles will randomly collide with an atom in your body. These ghostly particles, called neutrinos, are barely there at all. They have almost no mass and very rarely interact with anything else in the universe. To have a 50% chance of stopping a neutrino, you need a block of lead one light year long, a quarter of the way to our nearest star. Despite this, scientists use neutrinos to uncover secrets about the universe that would otherwise be invisible. Because they pass through even the densest materials that block electromagnetic waves like light, they can illuminate their deep secrets. Not only this, despite their reputation for being powerless, neutrinos have a part to play in the story of the creation of Earth and us. We're going to explore neutrinos by following three different journeys of three separate groups of this elusive particle and trace their trajectory through the universe. Please like, comment and subscribe for more chill space videos. Deep in the core of the sun, the fusion that lights up our solar system happens. Atomic nuclei collide, forming new atoms and releasing energy. Fusion is the process that gives us the building blocks of the material we see around us and the energy we need for life. Scientists counted up the energy going into fusion and the energy coming out and found that there was a slight discrepancy. Not enough energy was being produced as predicted. One plus one came to something slightly less than two. The remainder of this energy was discovered to be emitted in the form of this ghostly particle, the neutrino. Light is the fastest thing in the universe, but light interacts with matter, and in the layers of the dense material that make up the sun, it is trapped. Light will bounce around for hundreds of thousands of years before it reaches the surface. A neutrino makes the same distance in a couple of seconds, taking a straight line path through the layers of the sun. If the sun stopped fusing today, it would take hundreds of thousands of years to stop shining. But we would detect the absence of neutrinos almost immediately. Neutrinos provide an extra way to study the insides of things in the universe, like an x-ray machine, making solid objects transparent. With detectors on Earth, scientists are collecting data to see directly into the core of the sun. When a neutrino is detected, we can see the path it was travelling along. With some uncertainty, it's possible to trace back exactly which angle they hit the Earth, and therefore from where in the Sun they were emitted. Scientists can use this data to define the boundary between the core of the Sun, where fusion happens, and the upper layers, where it does not. When a neutrino or a photon reaches the surface of the Sun, it will take just 9 minutes for the photon to reach the Earth, with the neutrino taking very slightly longer than the photon. Neutrinos move ever so close to the speed of light, the fastest speed possible, but not quite. We'll find out more later in the video. Neutrino means little neutral one. Neutral because it ignores electric charge, which is how it avoids encounters with stuff, atoms. When you touch something, the tiny electromagnetic forces pushing back from the object cause it to feel solid. In a technical sense, no particles are touching. Electromagnetic forces, carried by the electrons in all atoms, push against each other. To us, it makes things feel solid, but when we zoom in, it's force fields that are doing all the work. An atom, if scaled up to the size of a football stadium, would be mainly empty space. A marble-sized nucleus would be in the centre, with electrons whizzing around the rest of the space, defining the territory of the atom with their electromagnetic force. When things touch, it's the electrons pushing off each other through electromagnetism, not the nucleuses colliding. Neutrinos don't feel electromagnetism. To them, matter is basically incorporeal, not even there. The only force that they respond to, beyond gravity, is something appropriately called the weak force. This force only extends a tiny range, much smaller than the diameter of the nucleus, the marble in the centre of the football stadium. Because of this, it's extremely unlikely that a neutrino will bump into any part of an atom and will sail through it like it's not even there. 
A supernova is the final explosion at the end of a massive star's life. The star will collapse in a very short period of time. A gigantic number of neutrinos are released in the span of 10 seconds or so. 10 to the 58 neutrinos to be exact, which is 100 million times as many atoms as there are in Earth. These neutrinos carry away the vast majority of the gravitational energy of the collapsing star. This energy is equivalent to all the light given off by all the stars in the universe, just carried away in unimaginably large numbers of this ghostly particle. Neutrinos are detected on Earth using vast underground detectors filled with water or other liquids with sensors covering the walls. When a neutrino hits an electron in an atom by pure chance, it releases a tiny flash of light, which can be easily detected by the sensors. A nearby supernova explosion triggered 25 neutrino detections in the late 80s. It's fascinating when two astronomically large numbers cancel out to a small number. The number of neutrinos given off from the supernova was vast, as we've mentioned, but the minuscule chance of them interacting on Earth cancels out to a number we can very easily understand, just 25. In the next nearby supernova explosion, which could be any day now, scientists hope to capture thousands of detections across the world. Neutrinos escape from the supernova core before light is able to. So a spike in the detection of neutrinos can prepare scientists to point their telescopes in the right direction and capture the image of the supernova explosion. When neutron stars collide, neutron, not neutrino, the stars are so energy dense that they are able to generate some of the heavier elements that we need to live and see my last video if you want to find out more. However, these elements are formed in the vicinity of a new black hole and these elements are in danger of being sucked in. The fusion of elements in the aftermath of the collision is so abundant that it creates wind. Enough high energy neutrinos are generated that they actually have a physical effect on the universe. These materials made in the collision, iodine, gold, platinum, among others, are carried safely away from the newly formed black hole on these winds of innumerable neutrinos. It's safe to say Earth would be very different if this process did not take place. Neutrinos have a mass, although it's so small we have trouble measuring it. We do know that they have some mass, unlike light. At the very least, you would need half a million neutrinos to make up the mass of an electron. And an electron is about 2,000 times less massive than an atom. We think they have mass because of a peculiar property they have. Neutrinos change type. In technical jargon, they oscillate between different flavours as they fly through the universe. The fact that they oscillate or change at all tells us that they move slower than the speed of light. Einstein showed that the trade-off for immense speed is a diminished sense of time, and something moving as fast as possible, the speed of light, experiences no time whatsoever. A photon is born and dies in the same instant. Neutrinos must experience some time, or they wouldn't be able to change. Therefore, it must have some amount of mass, even if it's a very tiny amount, so that it can experience some time. Neutrinos are so light and non-interactive that they are barely there at all. But it's these qualities that mean that they have a unique impact on the universe, and our science, and our existence. There's still a lot we don't know about this ghostly particle, but I hope you at least learned something. Thanks so much for watching.